interview with Kate Bush in the wake of the release of her album, our album of the week this week, in which she revisits and reversions some of her previous recording. Director's Cut is called. Well, a few days ago, I travelled to Kate's home to talk with her about her life and music. <laughs> Kate Bush, uh, which came, of course, from the album Lionheart, and we're in the English countryside. We are surrounded by the beauty of the English countryside in spring in Kate Bush's own garden. So thank you for having us here. It's very nice to see you. Well, it's, it's lovely to be in a beautiful day like today and listening to beautiful music. Just going back to some of the music that you've revisited now, we'll, we'll come on to the album in a minute or two, but um, Lionheart in particular, there's a very English sense about it, and of course you, you sing in English, as it were, <laughs> in an English accent. <laughs> Is Englishness a very important part of your music? It's part of who I am, so I think who you are is also very much a part of your work, don't you? So it's not something that I kind of specifically set out to do to try and make my stuff sound English, but I'm half English and half Irish, so, so uh, I suppose there's a bit of Irish coming through sometimes as well. A bit of river dance coming up sometimes, <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to the early days and uh, the time when you were interested in getting into the music business, but um, you were never wanted to compromise. You never wanted to be a commercial singer, songwriter. You wanted to do what you wanted to do. That's remarkable at an early age, I think. Yeah, I think, I think I'm... 
probably very stubborn and probably always have been. And I think I was very lucky to find what I wanted to do so young. I suppose by the time I was about 14 or so, I really felt that's what I wanted to do, was write music and make an album. That was my big ambition, was just to make an album. Crucially, encouragement, uh, or the ability to be yourself, is important for a youngster with that kind of ambition. You were given that freedom. Uh, Well, I was given fantastic encouragement, especially by my father, who was absolutely brilliant because when I was really young I used to write about two songs a night and um, I mean it's kind of horribly prolific and um, he'd always come and listen to my songs and um, it didn't matter if he was in the middle of watching a TV show in the evening or whatever, he'd always say well just let me see the end of the show and then I'll come and listen so he didn't always say it was fantastic he was quite honest but the fact that he was always there kind of gave me a sense of belief in myself it was just an incredible gift the mm. fact that he did that for me i think you know i i don't know if i would have been driven to carry on to do what i did without that kind of encouragement it's a very special gift he gave me the songs you wrote then have you kept them are they all still somewhere yeah they probably are somewhere i mean i remember one of the first ones i wrote it had about 20 verses and um most of my friends and family would walk out after the first 12 <laughs> <laughs> but um my father stuck right through the uh, the whole lot formal musical training no no I, I can't really um read or write music the only sort of ability i have came from learning the violin when i was young so um i can read and write treble clef but not very well most of it's done by ear so when you're writing music you, you sit at the piano yes and yes. put it down on well, I would say tape but you know whatever it is nowadays no well it's still tape, still tape for you. oh yes yes oh, okay. so i went through um, a phase of using digital equipment and um kind of feel that you know it was always a big mistake really because i love the sound of analog tape it's so much warmer and fuller so that's what i've gone back so to it's still analog tape for you yeah Great. getting the big break getting you know david gilmore taking an interest and getting you were still able to be your own person to say well no no this is not what i want to uh, the, the record company wanted one song released and you wanted uh, famously uh, Wuthering Heights as your first single so um, how difficult was it to, to stand up to the pressure <laughs> well I don't know why I was so um, determined to have that song as the single but I really was for me at that time that was really what I felt should be released and I remember vividly this meeting at the record company where everyone in the room wanted a different song as the first single and um, I was saying no I really think it should be Wuthering Heights, and I think we were just about to get into, you know, quite a sort of heavy debate. And um, one of the guys that worked at the record company just knocked on the door and walked in and went, "Kate, Wuthering Heights, great song, should be the single." And then walked out, and he just kind of blew the whole argument away. <laughs> How much did you pay him to do that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know who sent him, but I was very grateful at the time. <laughs> uh, now, of course, you have your own record label, an unusual name. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> why? <laughs> yes, well, why not? <laughs> I thought it was a bit of fun. And um, what's great is the reaction from some people. When I first uh, suggested it, I think a lot of people weren't sure if I was being serious, which I think is exactly the sort of reaction you want, really, isn't it? Well, yeah, yeah, let make, make them wonder. Is there a, a particular story behind it? Not really. I just thought, I thought it was a bit of fun, you know, rather than a, a very sort of um, lofty or serious name. Fish people, I should say, is the, the, the name. Is it going to be a bigger label than uh, for you? Are there going to be many other signings? I've no idea. Really, we just kind of set it up in order to create a sort of independence. And I'm still working with EMI, but in a slightly more independent way. Independence, again, this is a subject coming up again. It's very important to you. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, as an artist, having creative control is the ultimate thing because it's so difficult to try and create anything interesting anyway. So to have... Um, Anything else that's creating extra pressure and influences isn't always a desirable thing. So to be able to struggle within your own boundaries rather than other people's is, is I think, a, a great thing. We're going to play Moments of Pleasure. Now, originally, that, that was a, a song which was a lot of um, unhappy associations, perhaps, written from, uh, at a darkish time. Is that true? Well, I don't know. I think, um, I think the problem is that... Um, 
during that album, there were a lot of unhappy things going on in my life. But when the songs were written, none of that had really happened yet. And um, I think a lot of people presume that particularly that song was, was written after my mother had died, for instance, which, which wasn't so at all. Um, there's a line in there that um, mentions a phrase that she used to say about um, every old sock meets an old shoe. And um, when I recorded it and played it to her, she just thought it was hilarious. <laughs> she couldn't stop laughing. She just thought it was so funny that I'd put it into this song. So I don't see it as a sad song. I mean, I think there is a sort of um, reflective quality, but it, I guess I think of it more as a celebration of life. Do you find people over... They try and interpret your music rather too much. They try and put things into it that you didn't intend or were never there. Yeah, but I think, you know, that's kind of quite a good thing in a way isn't it because i think you know you create something and you have an intention that goes with that at the time but once you release it it's really up to other people how they interpret it or see it it's you know it's like a painting i mean i'm sure half the time when people look at a painting they've no idea what the artist originally was thinking of i'm not sure it matters i think if you can get something from it if it is at all thought provoking or it makes you feel something then i think that's the achievement some songwriters regard songs as their children or their babies you know they, they don't want anybody you know getting the, the wrong information about them the wrong idea about them or, or really changing <laughs> their view of them you you're happy once they're released they're on their own is that the way yeah i mean i don't think of them as children at all i mean for a start they don't eat anything <laughs> do they <laughs> don't cost as much <laughs> <laughs> no no worries about them after they've gone <laughs> here's this moments of pleasure some moments that i've had some moments of pleasure Thank mm-hmm. you.